Insightful Teaching with Jacob Prash on Moriel TV, where God is my teacher. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for tuning in with us and uh, catching up with Jacob Prash. Jacob, how are you tonight? Better than I deserve to be as usual. Praise the Lord Jesus who's coming soon. Amen. Jacob, it's always good to see you. Good to catch up with you. I'm not the only one. Uh, we have a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new people to Moriel that have been um, really catching on uh, to these episodes, catching up with Jacob Prash, and they send their hellos. Welcome in Jesus and blessings to all. Amen. Well, Jacob, you're in England. I'm in California. Not necessarily the best two places to be in the world today, but nonetheless, we're in Jesus. That's the real address. That's it. Jacob, you had a study, a Bible study on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, uh, living in the shadows, and it's particularly about Jeremiah and the book of Hebrews, specifically those two, those two books of the Bible. And it was about believers living in difficult times and, and how it correlates to today. Uh, I wanted to ask you, can you give a little bit more, uh, just if somebody has not watched it, but just a, a summation of what you meant by that? Well, it was our pilot, because we're not just having Zoom Bible studies now. Every Wednesday, we're going to have a live-streamed one, on both RTN and Moriel, and we've had a lot of people watching it in, in a number of countries. Of course, time zones are always an issue. Um, we're going to be continuing, Lord willing, next Wednesday with Elijah and the Olivet Discourse, looking at what the Scripture teaches about Elijah's ministry in the last days in light of the Olivet Discourse. But the one we just did is the one you pointed out, living in the shadows. How the believers in Israel and in Jerusalem before 70 A.D., we're living in the shadow of an impending national doom and the fall of the, of, of the Levitical priesthood and the temple, as predicted by Daniel and Jesus, and their need to be reminded of it, um, and not to trust in something that was under God's judgment. And we didn't say that specifically about the United States, of course, but we did say it about the Western world at large, including the apostate church. Now, the Old Testament parallel of this, of course, is primarily, not only, but primarily, the book of Jeremiah, living at a time when judgment was coming, when you had rapid changes of leadership, where you had false prophets predicting good things when bad things happened, as we've had now with Pat Robertson and, 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 and uh, Paula White and Sid Roth and yeah. these false prophets yeah. saying, saying these things, you know, giving people false hope, making God's people trust in a lie. So that was the teaching. It's available on RTN, and it will also be available on Moriel TV within a week. But that's the situation we're living in. Uh, so let's begin looking at what we're going to look at this week. I uh, encourage people to get a hold of that teaching through RTN TV. It will be up on YouTube this week. But it's in the shadows. Yeah, it certainly is one of the... Uh, 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 a monumental understanding of our day and age. Jacob, let's get right into it. Deep State Doomsday, new administration. Uh, Mr. Biden is in, uh, even though a lot of people didn't think he was going to make it, obviously, the new, uh, the new commander in thief, I suppose, new commander in chief, I suppose. 17 new executive orders in two days. Uh, Obama had eight, Trump had four, Bush had two, Joe Biden, 17. Jacob, is this... Uh, is this ruled by basically uh, like a dictator? It's ruled by fiat. The only difference is Obama resorted to doing it on a mass level when he lost control of the House and of the Senate. Fiat is, um, Biden is doing it straight out of the starting gate, again, ruling by fiat, uh, by decree, hmm. and knowing that the Congress will not oppose it. So that's what he's doing. He's not waiting for legislation. He's trying to reverse the entire Trump agenda and initiate some new things, um, most of which are detrimental to the national interest and will be proven to be so. Uh, you say deep state. Well, Brennan today, John Brennan, a man who I believe should have been indicted with James Clapper. They should have I been agree. indicted. Yeah. Uh, made it clear that the deep state, the FBI, the intelligence community, are going to be targeting conservatives, libertarians, and people who are described as religious extremists or fundamentalists, by which they mean born-again Christians, obviously. Um, highly tolerant of radical Muslims. 
the Biden administration has already announced that the seven Islamic countries that harbor terror that were put on the no entry list by the bump, by the by the Trump administration is removed. Now we have to remember the Obama administration, now the O Biden administration, <laughs> um, are responsible for what happened with the Boston marathon bombings. Yep. There were foreign intelligence warnings even from Russia not to let those guys in, but obviously the Obama administration wanted Americans killed. Uh, what happened in San Bernardino, where you are? Yep. What, 15 minutes drive from where you are? Yep. If that? Um, thank Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. The data we ha had as publicly available was even on, on the internet. But Obama didn't want to violate the rights of people determined to kill Americans. Well, Obama is, is, is now being replayed with O'Biden. They're doing the same thing. You're going to find the same kind of betrayal. When Iran was funding Islamic terror to kill Americans, the Obama administration gave them $150 billion in release funds, U.S., plus another $400 million secretly that they got caught doing in cash. Uh, anything to help radical Muslims to kill Americans. That seems to have been the policy of our government. It was certainly the policy of the Obama administration. Now it's the policy of the Biden administration. And it was the policy of the Trump administration, who continued to express visas for Saudi Arabians following September 11th for a year. Yeah. The United yeah. States government seems to have a policy of helping radical Islamic terrorists to kill as many Americans as possible. Yeah. Now, that's just the reality. I sound extreme because they want to describe me as extreme, but they will not deny the factual essence of what I'm saying. That's right. That's right. Uh, Jacob, <laughs> this is what's happening. Now, let's just go back to the deep state. Uh, okay, yeah, let's go back to Brandon. Okay, there are a number of people who are demonically deceived in American government, on national level, on the state governments. They're demonically deceived. There's a lot of naive Americans who lack discernment, even among Christians, who are deceived. But there are people, there are, there's a, a core of people, contingent of people, who I believe are demon-possessed, who are demonically possessed. I believe they are indwelt by an evil spirit who's controlling them. One of them is John Brennan. I believe that man to be demon-possessed. Another is Governor Cuomo of New York. I believe that man to be demon-possessed. Another is Adam Schiff, the congressman from California. I believe that man is demon-possessed. Struck from the FBI, from the yes. state. I believe that man is demon-possessed. I'm not saying demonically deceived. I believe that struck at Cuomo or demon-possessed. I believe that Schiff is demon-possessed, and I certainly believe that Brennan is demon-possessed. There are others, but these are people who are actually possessed by evil spirits, by devils. Yeah. Jacob, do you think Brennan became a Muslim? And there's, there's serious uh, uh, rumors about that. I don't want to uh, speculate too much, but there's enough evidence, I think, that people believe that he, he became a Muslim. He very well may have, and so may, may have the Republican Norquist, but you hmm. can't prove it. Right. Uh, even even perhaps Obama, yeah. but you can't prove it. Right. I guess it doesn't matter because they're on the side of Islam anyway. That's uh, right. And on the side of radical Islam. Radical Islam, absolutely. Dub the MI, MIAC report. This is what they're warning about. This is the new report that has come out. Uh, listed warnings to state troopers of suspicious vehicles with uh, things like Ron Paul's uh, bumper stickers, things like paraphernalia, MAGA hats, Constitution, Campaign for Liberty, Libertarians, all these are considered potential domestic terrorists. According to Brandon at an interview on MSNBC, he says Biden should go after them immediately. And uh, Jacob, this is a purge. This is not uh, some lunatic getting on TV. It's, saying it's the end of democracy. That's what they're trying to do, mm -hmm. destroy democracy. By the way, in this, they are supported by much of media and social media. Mm -hmm. Dorsey, I am absolutely convinced Dorsey is demon-possessed mm. from uh, Twitter. Twitter. I'm absolutely convinced he's demon-possessed. Incredible. I'm, I'm going to go through some of the executive orders, Jacob, and, and, and this is what's on uh, uh, O'Biden's mind, and it's uh, 
one of the ones is gender pronouns for the federal government. And literally within minutes, the White House website uh, uh, now is asking you which kind of pronouns you have. Do you, do you go yourself by they, them, her, him, uh, she, her, uh, or prefer not to share? This is a, uh, a radical change on gender pronouns because that's one of the things he wanted to do. Gender pronouns, racial equity, um, of course, the economy. Uh, but, you know, the website at the federal government level begin, began to change. Not only the, the health secretary, uh, who's a transgender, Rachel Levine, if that's, that's his real name, um, she, he, he, she, I guess you could say now, he is now the health secretary, and it's now for uh, transgender surgeries, you know, sex change, uh, trans athletes to compete against biological females and races, uh, I mean, is this thing, uh, the first thing on his mind, I mean, how radical is this change? Well, it's been progressively coming. As I always said, they use the term gender reassignment because they know that scientifically you cannot have sex reassignment <laughs> uh, chromosomally. So yeah. they call it gender reassignment. This Levine, I went on five different search engines looking for his original name, and it's Richard. Huh. But, but... All of them said racial, racial. Nobody would tell you his original name, even giving his early background, childhood, birth, and so forth. Oh He's a God. pediatric psychiatrist. <laughs> now, I saw photos of him, and he was not a bad-looking guy. But he's a grotesque-looking pseudo-woman. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sorry, doctor, but... There's X and Y chromosomes. You learned that in medical college, and yours <laughs> haven't changed, and they're not going to. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, Janet Yellen, who is uh, part of the Obama 1.0 as uh, Federal Reserve Chairman, she comes out, and instead of talking about policies, economic policy and things like that, fiscal policy, she says our, our economy is going to be based on diversity and racism. She I mean, was a absolutely useless Federal Reserve Chairman, absolutely useless so when you need to put somebody in charge of the Treasury, if you're a liberal Democrat, you go to the dustbin and find something that was thrown away. And they came out with Miss Janet. You know, yeah. She was absolutely horrible. Uh, again, it's a left-wing agenda that's stupid, that's counterproductive, yet somebody's making money. And we know who it is, the new robber barons of Silicon Valley in Seattle. Yeah. And, and, and you know, Jacob, it didn't stop there. Of course, he just named the Secretary of Defense. Um, Secretary of Defense, Mr. Lloyd Austin, because Congress would not, uh, at first Congress wasn't going to pick them because he had a set, he just retired in 2016 and there's a seven year waiting. You can't pick anybody. That's the, that's the, that's the rule. Uh, but the, of course, Congress didn't, uh, didn't stop them. And he was able to pick Mr. Lloyd Austin because he's from Raytheon. He's part of the industrial yes. complex, uh, military, yes. military industrial complex. And right away, him and Anthony Blinken had begun their plan uh, for war. And it took about 24 hours. It's not only Blinken, it's Burns and Sullivan. Mm. And particularly disastrous is Wendy Sherman. Mm. Wendy Sherman led the American delegation in negotiations for Obama's sellout to Iran. Oh, really and now she's Deputy Secretary of State. Yeah. A very, very dangerous woman. Mm. And of course, they all claim we're building back better. We're building back better. Yeah, this, this was... This was Obama. Oh, Biden says the same kind of cliches as Obama. After eight years in power, Afro-American family income declined $900 after two terms of Barack Obama. The audacity of hope. It was the audacity of hopelessness. <laughs> what the Democrats are doing is what they've always done. They're going to kill a lot of blacks. Oh. One of the executive orders issued by Biden, first day in office, first day on the job, is to freeze the Trump administration's plan to have subsidized insulin for diabetics. Yeah. Now, everybody knows Afro-Americans are diabetic at much, much higher rates than Caucasians. Leave it to the Democrats. They, are, they know how to kill black people, and they know how to do it with a smile. Mm. That's what they're best at. Afro-American woman, five times more likely to have an abortion yeah. than a Caucasian woman. Yeah. Where are most of the abortion clinics in and around black communities? And they're telling black people it's rights, like civil rights. Yeah. The Democratic Party, I'm telling you, if I was a racist, I would vote Democrat. 
Mm. If I hated black people and Hispanics, but particularly blacks, if I was a racist who hated, and I, I obviously do not, but if I hated black people, I would be a Democrat. That would the be party the of Jim Crow, the yeah. party of slavery, and now it's the party of abortion and the party of black children being shot to death in Chicago on their way to school. You're going to see a lot more gun, gun crime in cities controlled by Democrats, and almost all the victims will be black, and there'll be an increased number in black children being shot going to school or coming home from school. The Democratic Party is perfect. If you hate black people, if you're a racist and you despise black people, vote Democrat because yeah. they sure can kill them. Yeah. And speaking of that, Jacob, one of his radical policies, new radical policies is abortion paid by taxpayers, rolling back everything the Trump administration did against abortion and for pro-life and for pro-babies. And even uh, what Mr. Trump wrote at his final, uh, one of his final uh, uh, writings that he did was basically January 22nd, a commemoration of life. Uh, Mr. Biden comes in and he radically rolls everything back and it says now the taxpayer is going to pay for the abortion. Sure. The tax, again, an Afro-American woman is five times more likely to abort her baby than a Caucasian. Mm -hmm. The taxpayers should fund black genocide. The mm -hmm. taxpayers should pay to kill off blacks before they're born. Mm -hmm. We don't want too many blacks because they're going to swell the welfare rolls and the food stamp rolls and the prison uh, population too much. We just want enough of them to keep ourselves in power, same as they did under slavery and Jim Crow just enough to keep ourselves in power and in pocket, get rid of the rest of them. Only at one time they put them out in the field picking cotton with chains on, and another time they put them in chain gangs on the highways in Mississippi. Now they just uh, incinerate the corpses before they're born or watch the kids get shot in Chicago on their way to school. Um, you know, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how many People were shot. A thousand people were shot dead in Chicago. Chicago yeah. Last year. Yeah, Jacob. Uh, not to nearly mention, all of them black. All yeah. of them black. Not to mention Chicago, but Baltimore, Atlanta. Atlanta. Blacks killed by other blacks. Yeah, it's a high rate. That, that, that's social justice. That's woke. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and of course, they're, they're promoting everything uh, that promotes genocide that's, against the black people. Black lives don't matter to black lives matter. Yeah, you don't see Black Lives Matters coming against these policies. No, but no, of course uh, not. Black lives don't matter to Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Uh, and also, Jacob, uh, part of his policy now, it's, uh, of course, includes the Jewish people in the Jewish state of Israel. Uh, the ambassador for Israel, they haven't named them specifically yet, but <laughs> Mr. Uh, Blinken is in charge of that right now. Policy to recognize West Bank, Gaza, as well as Israel, to divide it, according to the ambassador. Of course. Uh, this is uh, this is rolled back everything uh, the Trump administration did in the first four years. Zechariah 12. Jerusalem is a heavy stone. All who lift it will hurt themselves grievously. Mm. Tries to divide Jerusalem. Yep. God's judgment will come on America. Oh, boy. That, that's, that's what I dread to, uh, uh, Jacob, is the fact that uh, these people in the State Department have no idea what they're dealing with. They have no idea what they're talking about. The stupid... The blithering idiocy of liberal American Jews is unbelievable. As I've often said, whenever a black person votes Democrat, they're saying, yes, boss, I's a coming. And whenever a Jew votes Democrat, they're volunteering to pay their own train fare to Auschwitz. Mm. And of course, they got no problem with China, who's very much, a, a very, very, uh, at least the CCP is very racist. And uh, they post, uh, they, they say they post no threat to us. They say they post no threat to America, the Chinese well, the way that the, government. The, yes, the way that the, the Bush administration was owned and operated by the Saudi Arabians through the Carlisle Group and the House of Saud, the way the Saudi Arabians had the Bush administration in their back pocket, the same people who funded September 11th owned the... Uh, Bush administration. Okay, so the same as the Saudis had them in the back pocket. China has Trump in his back pocket. Uh, Who is it still yeah. doing the business deal with? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. China will, you know, China is laughing and waiting. They know Obama is somebody who was bad for America, but good for them. Mm. And they know Biden's going to be the same. Yeah. In the eyes of our enemies, 
Iran, China, Putin. Joe Biden has no gonads, no spine, and no brain. And they're right. Mm. Well said, Jacob. And of course, uh, uh, we'll talk about China in a little bit, but uh, back to the economy, uh, because Biden says, I'm going to do a better job than Trump and all this stuff. And so he's dealt with jobless, uh, an economy that is jobless. Uh, unemployment rate is through the roof, at least is what they're reporting. I mean, it's, it's bigger than what they're reporting. And his first day on the job, he says, we need a $1.9 trillion uh, to the economy, which is only going to account for sixteen, about $1,400 per person. And uh, his own Democratic Congress, the squad, the, 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 what I call the four horsewomen of the apocalypse, comes out and say, that's not enough. That's not enough. You're not radical enough. Well, let's understand what that $1.9 trillion of quantitative easing of printed money that's going to cause inflation and put downward pressure on the dollar is going to do. Um, but, and the destruction of the dollar almost seems part of the agenda. Yeah, so they yeah. can replace it with global currency. Yeah. But putting that aside for one moment, understand what it is. The states that are largely inhabited by stupid people like New York, like where I'm from, like Illinois, and like California, where most of the people are stupid, um, and they'll vote for people like Newsom or Cuomo or de Blasio or that Lightfoot woman, you know, they're stupid people. They'll vote for their own destruction and destruction of their own cities and their own communities. They're in the hole financially to the point they can't get out. So what they want to do is go to the American taxpayer and people in more fiscally responsible and conservative states and say, you have to pay to get us out of the hole we dug ourselves into. Mm. That's what it is. It is a bailout for California. LA alone, LA County alone, 1.5 billion a year in social services mm. for people with no legal right to be in the country. And other people in the Midwest or, or, or the Farm Belt or the South or or the West have to pay for it? To bail California out? I'd say to California, <laughs> citizens of California move to a conservative state. Yeah. Let it yeah. choke. Let Hollywood pick up the bill. Let Zuckerberg and Dorsey pick up the bill. Let California choke on its own vomit. New York, and I love that city, mm. but let New York choke on its own vomit. That's what you voted for. That's what you have got. It is a bailout for these fiscally irresponsible states that have wasted billions and billions and tens of billions of the taxpayers' money, including on the provision of social services to illegal immigrants. Yes. And now they expect the rest of the country to pick up the bill for it. Yeah. Jacob, it's gotten to the point where people, no matter what you give them, these radical group, groups are demanding their entitlement. They're saying we're entitlement. And if you don't give it to us, we'll even go to your house and protest at the, at, like they did to Nancy Pelosi's house. Even though she gave them whatever they wanted, it's never enough. And no. So, so by, I mean, $1.9 trillion, it's, it's, you might as well just keep ratcheting it up because it's a bankrupt country anyway. And they, the squad comes as it's not enough. It's not enough. Uh, federal, uh, the federal uh, uh, minimum wage goes to 15. It's not enough. It's not enough. Where does this stop? I mean, is it just basically you just have to let it, the economy die? Look, I've often said Alejandra Ortega Cortez should be deported to Venezuela. <laughs> the Ab should be deported to Gaza. She actually danced with the Palestinian flag when she was first elected. And Omar should be deported back to Somalia. She never should have been allowed in the country. And that other one, Presley, should be deported to the Bronx Zoo. That's where these people belong. Um, the Democratic Party is going to, you know, find out what it bargained for. Yeah. They use the extreme left against Trump yes. to help get themselves elected. Yeah. But the extreme left are now being told what conservatives were told by the mainstream Republican Party. Yeah. Thanks for being our useful idiot. Now get lost. We'll call you when we need you next for the next election. Yep. And they're going to find that out. 
Uh, it, again, we've said this at least on two occasions. The Democrats twice pushed Sanders and his contingent out of the presidential nomination mm. with their superdelegates. There's nothing democratic about the Democratic Party. You've got these hundred superdelegates that are going to vote the will of the establishment. That's how Hillary Clinton got in. That's how Biden got in. Um, they'll use the left, but they don't want to move too far to the left because they have to protect corporate interests mm. of the new left. Mm. The new left. That's right. Yeah, they'll protect them. Yeah, well, they'll protect Soros and people like that as well. But certainly the Silicon Valley and Seattle crowd, yes. J Jacob, do you think that this is uh, paving the way for America to have UBI, universal basic income, eventually? I mean, that, that's really what they're going for, it seems like. Not America. I think it's global. Okay. I mean, at least in America, for sure, global. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least in America. See, well, the Antichrist promises people that. People are going to want it because hmm. they've, they've created an entitlement culture. Yeah. I mean, once you begin to go down that road, people are expecting it. I mean, uh, uh, no joke, Jacob, uh, Walmart has bought so many uh, 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 TVs and microwaves and all kinds of electronics ready to go on their pallet floor, ready for the stimulus check to come in, because that's where people are going to go buy. Of course. Yeah. The third, this is round three, I think. This is round three. True with Trump. This is Biden first day, $1.9 trillion. And, and of course, it's not enough because- The question is jobs, and they can't generate those. Yeah. So it, they're trying to generate no jobs. Yeah, it's not enough. Antifa riots on the first day of Biden getting in. He says, we don't want peace. We don't want unity. We want entitlement, and we want revenge. Uh, they got okay, started. let's look at what's likely to happen. America very stupidly, moronically, voted for Lyndon Johnson instead of Barry Goldwater. They painted Goldwater, who was an anti-segregationist, he was an anti-segregationist. He simply said that the Civil Rights Act is something that will not help blacks in the long term. He, he understood the Emancipation Proclamation did not end slavery, the 16th Amendment did. Mm. There's an amendment process. The federal government couldn't do the jobs of the states, and he said that politicians couldn't do the job of preachers. You can't legislate brotherhood. And he's right. All these years later, after the Civil Rights Act of Lyndon Johnson and co., which the Republicans voted through the Senate, the solid South Democrats, including Al Gore's father, mm. voted against it. It was the Republicans who, who gave it, but Goldwater being an exception and a few others. You come back more than 50 years later, and black people are in the same situation they've always been, just like Goldwater predicted. They also predicted or also misrepresented Goldwater as a war hawk who's going to get us into a war in Vietnam. Yeah, I remember that. Well, Johnson was planning it. <laughs> JFK was no longer in his, no, before his funeral, Johnson was meeting with Dean Rusk and Robert McNamara and Maxwell Taylor to expand the Vietnam War in the White House basement. Um, so, okay, you, you got your ultra liberal guns and butter. Johnson, that's what he was, guns and butter, a welfare state plus war. Same as Biden, a welfare state plus war. Mm. What happened? The left rose up against Johnson. I remember the anti-draft demonstrations in front of the White House. Hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? Hey, <laughs> hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? I remember the race riots in Watts and in Harlem and in Bedford-Stuyvesant, and above all in Detroit during the administration of Johnson. Hmm. Do not be surprised if there's not a similar radical left uprising against O. Biden. Well, Jacob, you're a spot on. Didn't even take one day. First day on the job, Biden, Antifa riots, Seattle, Antifa riots, Portland. Uh, Portland's on fire. Seattle's on fire. It is unreal. They got what they wanted, but it's not enough. But the media did to Trump what they did to Goldwater. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got what you, you wanted, Johnson, you got him. <laughs> Vietnam War, a debacle. Destroyed the nation. Hmm. A racial debacle. Uh, nearly destroyed the nation. Now they're doing this, the Democrats being the Democrats is what they've always done. I guess it's not cancel culture, Jacob. It's cancel thinking.
That's correct. There's, there's no thinking anymore. And uh, of course, they're calling for secret police against uh, uh, you know patriots, conservatives. Not against radical Muslims. No. Or against Antifa. No. But against honest citizens. Yeah. It's, it's basically a domestic war on terror is what they're calling for. And, of course, we talked about Brennan. He, he's like the biggest cheerleader on it. Again, I believe Brennan and Dorsey and Strzok and Schiff and uh, Cuomo, I believe those people are demon-possessed. Yeah. I really do. It is such a divide, Jacob, because you've got conservative governors who are saying, you know, get, you know, National Guard, come back to our states because you're, you, Biden is using him as his own secret police, yes. putting him on the Capitol, state cap, uh, at the Capitol Hill, and not letting him, uh, not, they're not even giving him a hotel. They make him sleep on the floor. Governors are calling him back. Biden is very upset. The only hope to save democracy from the rest of the country having to bail out California, New York, and Illinois and to save the Electoral College. So <clears throat> the left-wing loonies of New York, Illinois, and California will not determine the outcome of every election. The only way to do it is a convention of states at this point. Mm. Unless there is a convention of states, it's not going to happen. That is where things need to go. If, if there is a human solution, if there is a way to delay the inevitable, it has to be there. Secondly, as I've said, there must be alternative platforms to Facebook and to Twitter and, and to YouTube. There must be alternative independent hosts, web, service, web services, and, 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 and platforms of every description. Yeah. Thirdly, there must be national boycotts. If 50% of the people voted for Trump, they need to say to these companies who are trying to penalize my pillow that we're not going to shop in your store at all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Money talks. The bottom line will always be money talks. Mm. When you've got at least 50% of the vote, you can say, we're going to boycott you. Conservatives need to begin boycotting and bankrupting these companies. It's already, thankfully, already begun with mainstream media. Yeah. Even yeah. Fox is in trouble after Neil Cavuto and Chris Wallace pulled their stunt with the blessings of Fox's news management. Yeah. And already people are leaving Twitter and leaving yeah. um, these other platforms. It's yeah. already yeah. begun. That needs to be accelerated. Yeah. The other thing that needs to be accelerated is an independent party, an independent party that will leave the Republican Party to drop dead. Yeah. That's yeah, the talk, third thing that needs to happen. You talked about it, I think it was in episode three or four. Uh, yes. The need for one. The need for That's one. Correct. Constitutional party. Call it a look what McConnell party. did. Look what McConnell did. Yeah. Look, look what Pence did. Yeah. You can't trust the Republican Party. I mean, how would you ever be able to vote Republican if you love this country, if you're patriot? I never voted Republican until Donald Trump ran. Right. Independent. Yep. Dependent. Uh, uh, Jacob, war in the war in the uh, is in the horizon. Sorry, war in this is in the horizon. Not only in the state domestically, uh, but it just seems like I don't even have to tell you it's coming. It's already here. Uh, U.S. troops into Syria, twenty four hours into Biden's administration, confronted by Russian troops. Nowhere else but, of course, in Syria. And guess where, Jacob? Euphrates River. The Euphrates yep. River has oh, become the hospital. And Turkey can stop the flow of the Euphrates yeah. River. Read the prophecy in Revelation. Yeah. Well, again, let's go back. Let's go back just to the 1960s. The Democrats always say, peace, peace, and get you into war, war. Mm. Secondly, if you really want peace, peace has only ever come and only ever will come through strength. When they try to pursue peace, it'll be through weakness, placating China and Iran. There's never any peace with such people. These people are Kissingerists. You try to befriend people who hate you, who will then take advantage of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the Iron Curtain would have come down 15 years sooner if it had not been for Henry Kissinger. <laughs> mm. Uh, Jacob, it looks like the Joint Chief of Staffs got what they wanted with Biden. They got the war that they wanted. Uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely pointed toward Assad. 
It, it's not pointed toward Iran. It's not pointed toward Russia or China. It is pointed to someone that I guess you could say he's, he's no friend of uh, Christians or, or no friend of Israel and things like that. But he didn't post the greatest threat as maybe the other, uh, the other uh, countries. The problem with him is obviously he is an Alawite Muslim who's in bed with the Shias right. who are theologically similar. The other thing is he's Russia's boy. Yeah. That's the next thing. Yeah. Um, as much as I have supported the Trump administration, I do not think that the Trump administration dealt correctly or even in some cases fairly with the Kurds. Right. I think that was a failure. I would agree. I think had they been, you wouldn't have had the same kind of problems you have now no. had the Kurds been treated correctly and had we capitalized on their moderation and, and, and goodwill. Yeah. That was, that was a foreign policy mistake of, of the Trump administration. But with Biden, everything will be a mistake. Yeah. And this is, of course, uh, Damascus. Damascus is being threatened right now, Jacob. I mean, this is, uh, it, it's going the way of the biblical prophecies, as we all it's talk about. It's 17, yes. I read an article. It was not a Christian article. It was, had nothing to do. They're simply just reporting the facts. Uh, it mentioned Damascus and the potential destruction of Damascus, finishing the job Obama started. And it mentioned the Euphrates River, uh, Revelation chapter 9. Uh, it, it just seems to be it, God who watches over, the Lord watches over his word. He's going to fulfill it. These things are going to happen no matter who's on the White House, who's, who's not, who is and who's not. What do you see? I see, I'm thinking in Hebrew. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremiah 1. Oh, I also remember, He who keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Uh, but Jacob, it just seems like you mentioned the enemies come out of the woodwork. I haven't heard of ISIS in about four years since Trump's been there. ISIS comes out, takes responsibility, twin killing, twin suicide bombing in Iraq, uh, Baghdad in Iraq. Uh, three years of peace, all gone in one day, says an article. Iran threatens revenge on the U.S. because of what, what Trump did. Uh, it just seems ISIS, radical Islam, Iran, all are coming out. Of course, Obama's JV team that two weeks later was bombing subways in Europe, left and right, and then murdering people in San Bernardino, California, courtesy of Barack Obama. Now, courtesy of Joe Oh, Biden, what do you expect? Mm. Mm. ISIS comes out and takes responsibility. Iraq is another, uh, another, another uh, uh, basically uh, um, a time bomb that is going to explode pretty soon. That's correct. But the other thing, well, that, that is also the fault of Bush, of the Bush administration yeah. yep. and, and Bush Sr., not just Obama. However, this week, Iran was testing ship-to-ship -ship missiles in the North Indi Indian Ocean. Hmm. That's potentially very dangerous. It is dangerous. Dangerous to Israel, danger dangerous to the Middle East. Uh, Jacob, you said, uh, I think it was in episode three, that within six months, this, um, the Middle East will be on fire under Biden. That's before the election. Right. Well, I, you were right. You were right on one sense, and uh, it took less than six months. It was one day, and the Middle East That's is on fire again, thanks to Andrew correct. Lincoln, O'Biden, and the, uh, their policies, which are already very dangerous. But the first thing that they do, it's not deal with the Middle East, at least in, in the straight sense. They said, we need more lockdowns. We've got a 100-day mask, uh, federal mask mandate, more lockdowns coming to the U.S. Uh, obviously, the U.K. and Europe is dealing with their own lockdowns and things like that. But uh, the, the, the Americans are fleeing by droves states that are putting this uh, lockdowns in heavily. Uh, I mean, there is from California to New York to Illinois, people are fleeing to more freer countries. But that's that's Biden's uh, more freer states. That's Biden's policy. Don't worry about the it. Is. Of course it is. But of course, the ones who are going to die in the biggest numbers are the people who can't afford to flee. No. Blacks and Hispanics. Yeah, they're yeah. going to kill the most of them as, as they can. Here in England, Dave Royal, one of our missionaries, yes, former board member, his son. There, there's Ge genetic predisposition to serious diabetes in the family. Mm -hmm. His son, who we're praying for, Aaron, yes, requires dialysis. He was down 
to 9% kidney function. We couldn't get him into a hospital on dialysis because of the waiting list. Aggravated, first of all, socialized medicine, the waiting list. Yeah. More, more, Ob more Obamacare. If it doesn't oh, work okay. in England, get it in America. Secondly, COVID. They, they, they used to be able to do eight operations a day. It requires a fistula implantation for the dialysis. Now they can only do three because of COVID. Mm -hmm. The lockdowns are killing people in and of itself. Brilliant, Jacob. Brilliant. You're not the only one who said it. I think you're in good company. Duke University Medical School, Harvard, John Hopkins, experts, not, not just the average student, experts are saying uh, COVID, you know, is going to kill people, but the lockdowns will kill millions in excess. Uh, this needs That's to stop. Right. This needs to uh, continue, uh, uh, basically continue to, to it's going to continue to destroy people. Another study in the EU, this is actually from the EU, saying that it is going to cause more problems in Netherlands, Spain, England, France, Germany, Italy, and uh, they should look at the models of Sweden and Korea that did not have the extreme lockdowns. That's and were correct. Able to have a lower rate, uh, uh, basically That's correct. people died in there. But even the senior, uh, a senior MP, uh, his name is uh, Sir Desmond Sway, saying yes. England is about to explode. Unless yes. Boris Johnson tells us which way it's going to go, where's our exit, people are going to rise up. Jacob, I was at a funeral earlier today in Wiltshire, England. Yeah. For a brother who's gone to be with the Lord. They wouldn't let any more than 15 people in the church. Hmm. During the singing of his favorite hymn, we had this... We could stand <coughs> and listen to our choir sing it on a recording. We were not allowed to sing. I mean, <coughs> I mean it was a joke. It was a complete and utter joke. Yeah. That was just today at a funeral in England. This is what's happening. Jacob, doctors like Professor Stephen Riley, which is an infectious, infectious disease expert in the UK, who says, stop doing lockdowns. They don't work. Other MPs are saying, stop doing lockdowns and don't work. What is the... What's the gain for Boris Johnson and going extreme lockdowns? Not Sweden, not Mainstream Korea. Mainstream media and social media yeah. are suppressing medical and scientific opinion mm -hmm. that goes against the party line. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of paying a political price and his government falling because what will likely happen if you stop the lockdowns is you will have a short-term increase yes. in the number of infections yeah. and deaths but then you will have a decrease. <laughs> but as soon as it begins to increase, there's going to be a political upheaval. That is part of what is happening. It, it baffles me, Jacob, because they say, you know, uh, uh, Brits can't leave the, the country, Brits can't live certain areas, but then, and he throws pack from other countries of the world coming into England, but yet no Brit can fly to anywhere else. It's it just absolutely right. absurd. It does not make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, and I, I think what Jacob, in your opinion, America, England, the UK, Canada, uh, you know, Australia, blindness, lack of sense. I think it's a blindness, but I also think the blindness is not simply a woeful blindness. I think it's a divine judgment on these nations mm. for having turned their back on the Judeo-Christian heritage. Mm. Abortion. Now you have euthanasia. I mean, it's just spiraling out of control. I mean, it's a, the elderly are being treated like, well, you know, you don't matter. Don't matter if you get COVID or not. You're I've not always said that. If you remember, Marco, we've been saying once the battle for abortion, non-therapeutic abortion was lost, euthanasia will be the next battle. Hmm. The generation responsible for allowing Roe v. Wade is going to reap what it sowed. Bye-bye, hmm. Granny. Yeah. Too expensive to keep you alive. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant, Jacob. That's absolutely right. Gonna reap what they sowed. Yeah. And you I remember and you saying that. And they need Mexicans in the country illegally to protect to replace the ones that are gonna die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now China's taking advantage of this, Jacob. China deploys troops into Hong Kong for another oh. extreme lockdown. Now, it didn't seem to me when I read the article that the outbreak was any anything bigger than what they had before. It seemed like the numbers were still the same, but certain regions, China's going in there and going into full 
uh, almost military lockdown to the to the area. I won't name him. I we can't name him obviously, but Morial right. does have a rep in Hong Kong. Yes, from whom we get regular reports. Yeah, it's even worse. It's worse than what's being told. Wow. And the gen and he also speaks Uyghur. He's one yes. of the people who translated the Bible. He did translate the Bible into, into the Uyghur Uyghur. language. That's right. Okay, what, what China is doing to the Uyghurs, the world remains silent about. Biden remains silent about. Nobody cares. Yeah. Well, what they did to the, uh, to the Chinese from that uh, cult, the, all the orange. Uh, Falun Gong, Falun Gong. That's Falun Gong, that's right. Now, another issue that's happening, Jacobs, of course, they, they told us that, you know, vaccine was going to cure it all and things like that. But even California, liberal California, where I live, issues an alarm, unusually high number of reactions and death. Uh, in the, not only in the country, but especially in California, allergic reactions, even uh, to some consider uh, MLB superstar, Hall of Famer, Hank Aaron, who, Hank wanted, Aaron. To be, yeah, who wanted to be a, uh, an example to the black community. At least they trotted him out to be that way. Yeah, uh, well, he, as I said, the Democratic Party is the party of killing blacks and always has been. Hmm. So blacks are going to be the guinea pigs, first of all. Yeah. And they're going to say, we're putting blacks first because they're socially underprivileged and they're more yeah. likely to get to become infected with COVID. So we're going to inoculate them first. What they're saying is you're a guinea pig. Mm. Now, Frank, Hank Aaron wants to be an example to the black community. And he was a fantastic baseball player yeah. and a personally yeah. nice person. If you've ever watched the interview yeah. with him, nice yeah. guy, but Very a fantastic, fun. incredibly, I mean, he's in a league with Babe Ruth and those guys. An incredible baseball player, and he wanted to be an example to the black community. I don't question his intentions, but but he is an example to the black community. Yeah. A guinea pig. Yeah. Well, well, it's uh, what you said, Jacob. Is exactly what Fauci said. It's exactly what the mayor of L.A. said. That we need to get the black community ahead of everybody of else uh, to try this vaccine. Has never been tried on anybody else. That is correct. Um, Jacob, I wanted to get your take on this as, as, as we go on, uh, because we got something at the end regarding uh, uh, church issues, and I really want to get your opinion, so we're going to save some time for that. But this one, I think it's important. You've talked about this before, not specifically this news, but in, in the realm of um, the image of the beast. Now, I'm going to read this to you. Microsoft has granted a patent to reanimate dead people as 3D chatbots. You're basically going to be able to bring back your, your parents, your grandparents, any political figure, anyone that has died already, and bring them back in a reanimated state as a robot, as a chatbot. You'll be able to communicate with them uh, to chat conversation one-on-one -on -one or to text and things like that. Uh, the tech giant has raised the possibility of creating an AI that can actually be your granny or your grandpa uh, that would speak for it with conscious, with... Uh, uh, you know, memory and things like that that is able to uh, to pick up on images, voice data, social media, electronic messages. Uh, this is, uh, it, it's not only creepy, but it's also the reality that this is what people are going to be in conversations with the dead. Marco, there's a recording we did 25 to 30 years ago. The first version was about 25 years ago, although there were more primordial versions before that. It was called Just As It Was in the Days of Noah. Mm. Just As It Was in the Days of Noah. On there, I said, one of the things that is going to happen in our lifetime, this is 25 years ago, <clears throat> is that you are going to see a rapprochement between science and the occult. With the Enlightenment, they split. Astrology went one way, astronomy went another. Folk medicine went, and healing arts went one way. Medical science and pharmacology went the other, okay? Alchemy, magic went one way. Chemistry and physics went the other. They split. I said you're going to see a rapprochement between science and the occult in our lifetime, and you're going to see it in particle physics, mm. computer videography, mm. and biogenetic engineering. Add to that AI now. Yeah. I said it's going to be a thing where grandmother's not dead. We had tea this morning. <laughs> where virtual technology, people are going to create their own reality through virtual simulators that will eventually not be a booth, but something that you put on like goggles or glasses 
or, or a helmet. And that reality. will be your world. Yeah. You, I always wanted to be Napoleon. I always wanted to be Cinderella. <laughs> I always wanted to be Elvis. People will construct their own reality. And in that reality, there will be a scientific or technologically facilitated practice of necromancy, of talking to the dead. Wow. I said this can combine with cloning of their DNA eventually. And, of course, now we have AI and advances in robotic technology. Yes. These things will ultimately, of course, lead to the image of the beast in Revelation chapter 13. Um, but we said this 25 years ago, in essence. Yeah. And only now it's happening. But, yeah. I mean, and I, I don't think, I, I, I don't believe I was the only person who saw it coming, <laughs> but I, I think I was probably one of the few Christians, at least, who, right. who yeah. said so. And, and it's happening. Um, not to my credit, but I believe the Lord showed it to me. Yeah. And it's happening. Yeah, Jacob, it's it's not necessarily that uh, it's it's not even theory anymore. This is a no. granted that they can take basically what they call social media posts, videos, private yes. messages, download them in a three D life model of the deceased, and yep. you can basically have a conversation with JFK. You can have a conversation yep. with Ronald Reagan. The things that cybernetics and the Scientology cult dreamed about and pretended they could do, Silicon Valley in Seattle will do. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. mixed with the occult and the rice of occult. That's correct. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's correct. Well, what, 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 what was his name, that, that charlatan, that uh, L. Ron Hubbard? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cybernetics and the things that he talked about yeah, are, are becoming scientifically possible. Unreal. Unreal. I, I could not have explained this to my grandmother. I could not have explained this because... Uh, obviously, she would not have had any concept of it, but how quickly. Yeah, I said watch computer video graphics. Yeah. Watch particle physics and watch biogenetic engineering. Yeah. And now, obviously, to that, we add AI and robotics. Yeah. yeah. This technology, Jacob, which is only exponentially. Uh, By the way, I'm not claiming to have been a prophet. I'm just saying <laughs> I saw it coming, you know? No, we understand. I, I think probably other people did too. Yeah, but books like uh, um, the Hebrew author, uh, I forget his name at this point, but he wrote uh, uh, Homo Deus, Homo Deus, and the professor from MIT, uh, Max Turtman, who wrote uh, Life yeah. 3.0. Uh, they're, they're talking about things that may sound maybe sci-fi in, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, but a reality that they say, well, AI would just basically run the world. AI yeah. will be able to communicate with uh, dead relatives. It would be a new way of living. Uh, they're, they're not talking in theory. They're saying this is a very real possibility within yes. our lifetime. Um, Jacob, is this technology? Not only that, it's going to, like, it'll control political opinion. Yeah. It'll, it'll determine what you should think, and you'll think that way because that's what AI said. Why well, just leave that to the AI? Yeah, it, it, and it's, it's certainly, we see it, it'll, it'll replace the capacity of objective critical thought. Mm. It won't be accepted it'll anymore. replace the capacity of objective critical thought. So basically, you would vote and you would, uh, you would think the way AI has told you to think. That's correct. Incredible. Well, I think we've gone, we've gone to that point already. The chickens have come home. Well, to they, they can already tell by marketing research techniques using artificial intelligence, just from the websites that somebody visits, yeah. what they like, what they're interested in, and then they can construct a game plan how to manipulate those people. Yeah, especially with the internet of all things, the internet of all things, right. everything's connected, your thoughts will be connected to the internet of things, and uh, uh, basically whatever you want will be given to you, and whatever, you, uh, whatever your hopes and dreams will basically be uh, be shipped to you in an Amazon box, per se. <laughs> um, you know, another thing that's happened already, it's been going on for more than 10 years, is microchip implantation subcutaneously into humans. Yes. yes. That, that'll be another factor. They, they, they've had, uh, in the UK, Germany, the US, they have these, what they call chip parties, but it's not tortilla chips. It's, it's literally chipping, yes. chipping you uh, with information. Yeah, it's Reading, yes. Yeah. It was a professor in Reading that, <laughs> University of Reading, near where I am now, that was one of the leading people in pioneering this globally. Uh, and, you know, again, we're talking about governance of emotional temperament. Mm -hmm. 
and you combine that yeah. with uh, psychoactive pharmacological technology or pharmatechnic technology, mood-altering drugs yes. that can interact with the implanted technology. <laughs> Well, Jacob, there's people already that uh, um, basically want uh, these hallucinogen drugs and things like ayahuasca to be absolutely mainstream and be used by everybody. Yeah. Well, you see, the problem is with the implantation, Marco, and these um, mood-altering drugs, these pharmatechnic mood-altering drugs combined with subcutaneous implantation technology and the Internet of Things is... With the advancement of robotics, you won't be able to tell the difference between a real person and a robot mm. because a real person will function too much like a robot. Wow. Until now, it's been robots trying to mimic humans. Humans. It's going to be a situation where humans are mimicking robots. You understand? <laughs> you can see how Revelation 13 can happen. Yeah. Especially you add the element of uh, Satan and the element of the Antichrist of you know, being on that. The cult element, uh, correct. Jacob, is, in your opinion, is that technology not to, I mean, you look at it and you begin to question how far, how long do the we have? The rudiments of it are already here. Yeah, how long you do know, we the have? Way I, the way I look at it, and I, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm a cyber moron. But the way I look at it, it's something like this. You can... There are software programs where you can dictate a book instead of having to type the book. Yes. You can dictate it. That technology is not as bad as it once was, but it's not as good as it's going to be. Mm. Okay? Right now, they're beginning to overcome the problems. Like if I were to use a Greek or Hebrew word, it, it would throw the old program out. They wouldn't know how to. They're going to get past that mm. with artificial intelligence. Um, and the Internet of Things. So just go to a Hebrew or Greek. Or what you know? You, oh, he's quoting from the New Testament in Greek. Well, it'll just automatically get that and put them. This dictation technology is not there yet. It's not there yet, but it's getting there. Mm. Well, that's the way these things are. They're not there yet, but they're getting there, mm. and they're getting there quickly. With a political agenda on back of it. Mm. You certainly seen things like Google and YouTube and Twitter with that kind of political agenda. And, and I remember watching uh, some of these programmers, some of these early pioneers in the programming of algorithms, and, and, and they came out and very, very candidly said, look, we, we developed this, but we don't even know what was ha gonna happen. And, and no real uh, programmer can ever tell you what that program is eventually going to do. And they say, well, even the best programmers don't know what AI will do. That's correct. They do not know what it's going to do. Mm. But what is going to happen when someone's spouse dies, a young person loses their husband or their wife, and through AI and robotics, you can continue your marriage. Mm not only relationally, but even sexually hmm. by, by um, cyber proxy yeah, or yeah. something like that. Well, they have some of that already in, in, in robotics. So, yeah. so, but it's not there yet. Not there yet. <laughs> but it's, yeah. Um, unbelievable. The speed of it, Jacob, it's just baffling to me. The speed of it is baffling. Yep. A lot of this stuff is happening in Japan. Hmm because of the demographics in Japan, there is a market pressure to develop some of this technology, particularly robotics, more than in other countries, uh, more than in other developed countries. Yeah, understood. Uh, Jacob, the f last few minutes we have, and, and I, I wanted to save some time for this because uh, I, I call this part, the jokes on us, Trump's prophecies and the false prophets. Uh, I got a litany of them. I'm not gonna give you all to them, uh, all the names here. You know some of them, Dutch Sheets, Lance Walna, uh, Kat Kerr, uh, Mark Taylor, who says God changed his mind uh, regarding his word, uh, Sid Roth, all appear on this idea of Flashpoint. There's this show called Flashpoint, should be Prophet's Point, I guess, the false Prophet's Point. But they all claim, and still claim to this day, don't worry about it. Trump's going to get in, and even if he doesn't get in, he's still going to get in because God uh, 
uh, God has a plan for America. He's not going to let this happen. It, it sounds so much like what's happening in the secular world with Q and the QAnon. Can you comment on that, Jacob? I'd go back to our Bible study again last Wednesday, Living in the Shadows, in Jeremiah 28 and 29. In 28, Jeremiah was dealing with Hananiah and the false prophets who were making favorable predictions during the time of transition of leadership from Jehoiakim to Zedekiah. And they were saying, it's going to be all right, he's going to get in, and this is going to happen. And it was completely wrong. In the chapter 29, you see the outcome. That's the kind of situation we're in. I'd point you back again to the Bible study. Um, now, <clears throat> if anyone by now, if anyone even five years ago didn't know that Dutch Sheets doesn't play with a full deck, <laughs> theologically and spiritually, didn't know that Sid Roth is a vast as a fruitcake. If they didn't know that Pat Robinson is a conniver and a false prophet. If they didn't know, you know, that Paula White on her third marriage is a Jezebel spirit. If you didn't already know that five years ago, <laughs> you set yourself up for it. Mm. And you know what's really tragic? Cognitive dissonance. Mm people will still go back and listen to them. Mm. Hart Robinson has prophesied the, the victory of George Bush. Mm. You think people would have given up on him back then? <laughs> they they, they want to be deceived. Yeah. Well, you if you want to be deceived, you will be. You got this guy from Bethel, uh, Chris uh, Valutin. I think he's the assistant pastor who prophesied Trump. that Trump was going to win. Well, he, he, he repented. He changed his mind. He said, well, I was wrong, but it doesn't make me a false prophet, he says. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, he says it doesn't make him a false prophet. Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy says it does. Mm. Yeah. Jesus said there'll be false prophets in the last days, and he's one of them. It, it, it's like multiplication, Jake. I mean, you got to, I mean, it's a list of people that have said, don't worry about it. We're in, there's a plan, trust the plan, trust this, trust that. Well, they said even trust God, but it, it, was, it was mainly man's plan that they were trusting in. Of course. Yeah. And it's Jeremiah same. 28, you made God's people trust in a lie, Hananiah. Mm. You made God's people trust in a lie, Pat Robertson. You made God's people trust in a lie, Dutch Sheets. You made God's people trust in a lie, Bethel, California. You made God's people trust in a lie, Paula White. You made God's people trust in a lie. On the other side, Jacob, you got the false prophets, but on the other side, you got leaders, certainly big leaders, who are on the opposite, uh, opposite end. I'll give you one example. It'll be Beth Moore, who says Trump was an evil man and no Christian should ever vote for him. I guess, but she gushes over Biden and she gushes over uh, all the people attending the inauguration and people became concerned and they question her on it. And her response is, of course, blocks him out of uh, social media. She doesn't want to deal with it. She's too busy leading Electio Divina with what's-his-face, Piper. <laughs> John Piper. Uh, Brian Broderson, you know him. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> posting about uh, Biden's speech, how he wants unity and getting along and all those things. And, uh, of course, he, he says he doesn't get into politics. He never, you know, quoted about, uh, posted about Trump, but he quotes about Biden. He posts about Biden. When questioned, he does the same thing. Blocks everybody from the YouTube page or uh, 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 Instagram page. Uh, Christian leaders on one end, trusting in, I mean, how would you go along with somebody who says radically he wants to kill babies, wants to impose transgenderism, wants to come against Israel? I mean, this is Calvary Chapel. Uh, of course. This, is, this is Beth Moore, probably the most famous uh, uh, women teacher right now in, 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 the, in the church. I'm not saying she's right or true, but saying she's popular. Uh, these are the leaders. Yep. What, That's what, right. You got the NAR on one end, Jacob, trusting in a lie. You got the opposite sense, social justice. Where did, That's God's, correct. People go? Where did God's people go? I mean, it just seems like... We're having a pop state church. Yeah. yeah. Only place you can go is Jesus. But the scriptures do address the faithful remnant in every situation. There will always be 7,000 who don't bow the knee to Baal. We have to beseech the Lord by his mercy that we will be among them. Hmm. 
I mean, even the, the pastor who uh, um, prayed the prayer at uh, Biden's inauguration, you know, in the strength, in the, in the strong name of our collective faith, n- never mentioned Jesus. This is in light of uh, Congress who just came out and said, well, we're going to pray in the, in, the, in the monotheistic God, Brahman, from, from the Hindu, the Hindu religion. And uh, then he ends with uh, a man and a woman. Uh, it, <laughs> what happened to Israel when they did that stuff in mm-hmm. Jeremiah? Praying to the alien gods. Yeah. You want to know what that stuff is? I can tell you. I've been to India a few times, and we we have a ministry in India, and we're building an orphanage in India. You want to see what that stuff is? Go to India. Watch a baby dying of hunger while a cow is fed sacks a week because the life of the cow is worth more than the life of the human baby. I've seen it. And you have Westerners going to ashrams and gurus and listening to these things. Not to make a plug, but I'm going to make a plug. Morial Missionary, our, our administrator and missionary and evangelist in Thailand, we have a few, but indigenous, but he is the main one, is, of course, Scott Noble. That's right. And he authored a book, Resisting the Mystical. Now, Scott is a, something of an academic, well, he's an academic expert in Theravada Buddhism, because that's who he witnesses to. And one of our evangelists is a Buddhist monk who got saved, Jay Lee. Yes. But Scott wrote this book, available from the Morio website and also from Morio UK. You can get it in your own country. If you go on the Morio website and go to Morio UK or through the Morio online store, it's not terribly expensive. Resisting the mystical. And it shows how. Eastern religion has infiltrated the church, and it's infiltrating the church and needs to be resisted. We've been warning for years since the Toronto experience about Kundalini Yoga coming into the church, courtesy of servants of Satan, such as John Arnott and then Michael Brown, uh, the fireman. Um, (laughs) This is an infiltration of, of, of New Age into the body of Christ. Resisting the Mystical by Brother Scott Noble. Morial Missionary in Thailand, I would recommend you read this book. Yeah. Uh, the whole agenda at Bethel rides on this stuff. Absolutely right, Jacob. I've met them both, and I have the book recommended highly. Get it, sell your shirt, go get one, and uh, and bring it home and study what's going on because yeah. it's, uh, it, it is eye-opening to see. And he, I think Scott's got 100% insight into what's going on. He lives among that community and he's able to witness the gospel to them. Uh, Jacob, we've talked about a lot of things. Final words to the body of Christ with all the constellations of prophecies going on, where to look, what's happening, the confusion, the apostasy, even maybe the fear and anxiety that can come from hearing some of the news that are going on. Final words for the believer. I have very little hope politically. One of the few victories we've had is Nancy Pelosi has lost seats in the House of Representatives, which lends credence to the opinion that the election was rigged and it's counting. They used COVID and absentee balance to rig the counting because these gains were made in the House. It's not likely that people would vote for a conservative Republican for Congress and vote for Biden to be president. Okay, of course, the media is not reporting this. Barack Obama came in and controlled the Senate and the House, an extreme left, the most left-wing administration the country had ever seen. People were saying that the Republican Party is finished and this and that. Within two years, two years later, the Congress was dominated by people who would not support Obama. He had to force Obamacare through in the beginning of his term using the nuclear option. He just couldn't get it through otherwise. Uh, Of course, Roberts in the Supreme Court, that wonderful Republican, took legislation and rewrote it unilaterally. And 
made it into a tax, which the legislation was not written as, or drafted or passed as a tax, but he just took the law into his own hands unconstitutionally and judicially forced it down people's throats the way the nuclear option was done by Harry Reid in the Senate. But Obama lost control of all within two years. So be careful in the short term that their agenda will be very radical initially mm. because he's got to try to force it through before he runs the risk of losing the Senate and the House. Okay? That's, now that's purely a political analysis. It's not God's wisdom or a prophecy or anything like that. <laughs> You're asking me from the perspective of this what I would say and think. When you see these things happening, lift up your head. Your redemption draws near. He's coming. Our job is to prepare the way for his return. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. Jacob, simply brilliant. That's exactly what God's people need to hear. And I pray that's an encouragement to have all those who hear it, to our new listeners, to our new subscribers, to those who uh, take this video and put it on their own YouTube page and things like that. Uh, I pray that it goes well. Jacob, thank you so much for catching up with us. Thank and, you, uh, Marco. We love to catch up with you. Please join us on Wednesday uh, for a Bible study. It is advertised on the Morio website and on Morio TV. Get a hold of RTN as well. Yeah, get a hold of the link. Get it. It's fantastic. More people are joining in. Jacob, hearing great things about it. Thank you so much for catching up with us. God bless. Have a good night. God bless. For more information about Moriel, check out our website, www.moriel.org.